Good morning everyone! Today, our group will discuss the five topics involving geological hazards. Our group is asking you to cooperate with us. After every topic, we will ask you one question. You can post the video or watch the discussion to answer our question. So listen to us and you may ask my group mates for your inquiries and clarifications. So have fun and enjoy watching and listening. Our first topic will be discussed by Mr. Abanador and Ms. Marlette. So, let's start. Thank you, Clarence. Our topic is about the geohazard or geological hazard. So what do you mean by geological hazard? So the term implies itself, geologic or geological, meaning to say it is a natural phenomenon and it is a consequence of geological process and ground conditions. In other circumstances, the geological hazard is also caused by the human activities. Referring to our given definition, it is said to be a consequence of ground condition. The perfect example for this is the mining. Obviously, mining causes the landslide that brings hazard to any possible affected areas. So, as what the definition states, Geological hazards can be a disaster to not just us, but also to all the things present here in the Earth's surface. Since it is related to the Earth's structure, its capability and possibility to affect us extremely is high. So let us have an example to elaborate this given characteristic of the hazard. So tsunami is an example of geological hazard. So, tsunami is characterized as a giant wave and has a speed like a jet plane. From the word giant, we can conclude that a tsunami can affect a large population as it successfully destructs or affects the area. The geological hazard became a disaster since there are already casualties involved. Geological hazard is happening suddenly, big strength quick disaster and heavy risk. We can mitigate it. How? By acknowledging this, it will give us the opportunity to be prepared and reduce the intensity of the damages. For those who are watching this video, please let me know if you learned something from the topic. Based on your understanding, what is geological hazard? You can comment your answers and for your information, all of your answers are correct as long it is related to the topic. Geological hazards are often caused by the movement of tectonic plates, which can cause earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Volcanic eruptions occur when magma rises through the crust, usually due to the interacting tectonic plates or hotspots. Earthquakes are caused by fault lines in the crust that can be triggered by a variety of factors, including plate movements and substance. Volcanic eruption can release dangerous gases that create a variety of health problems from humans. Earthquakes can also release toxic gases from underground in the earth crust as well as cause landslide and tsunamis. Kaya kung mapapansin natin na kapag may nangyari isa sa mga causes, halimbawa ay nagkaroon ng volcanic eruption, there's possibilities that there will be an earthquake because of the movement of tectonic plates. Eruptions may also cause ash clouds that block out sunlight and damage crops resulting in famine or other food shortage for those living near active volcanoes. Earthquakes can destroy buildings and bridges which result in loss of life as well as property damage. And now that we explained what are the causes of geological hazard, the next question is, how can we now prevent or spot a hazard when these things happen? So the next reporter will explain and give info about the sign of impending geological hazard. Princess and Rhea. Signs of impending geological hazard. Sinkholes and volcanic eruption. In sinkholes, trees or fans posts that tilt or fail, foundation that slant, new small plants that appear after rain, cracks in the ground, sudden drainage of plant. Sa sinkholes, ang pagtagilid at pagbubo ng lupa ay dahilan kung bakit nasisira ang mga pundasyon ng bahay 
at lupa dahil dito nagkakaroon ng maliit na parang no, lawak kapag bubuhos ang ulan. In volcanic eruptions, increased streaming activity, Carter grew due to the presence of magma at or near the crater. <coughs> Changing color and steam emission from white to gray due to entrained ash. Ground swell or inflation, ground fissuring due to magma intrusion. Located landslide, rock falls, and landslides from the summit are not attributable to heavy rains. A volcanic eruption is when a lava and gas are released from a volcano, sometimes explosively. Most volcanoes provide warnings before an interruption. Toward the surface, when normally generates detectable earthquakes. Well, the warning preceding volcano events typically allow sufficient time for affected communities to implement response plans and mitigation measures. So, why should we care? Um, it is important to know about volcanoes because volcanoes are lava and rock. They are powerfully destructive and it can kill you. Yeah, I call on Princess Candelaria for asking questions. Now, I will ask you some questions. What are two examples in geologic hazard? What is that? Yes, it is sinkholes and volcanic eruption. Okay, very good. Next, Mel and Balmeo. Thank you, Princess Andrea. Our next topic is geological hazard maps. Geohazard maps are specialized maps that show how vulnerable locations are to hazards. These maps can help in disaster planning and management. MGB's geohazard maps include information on locations vulnerable to rain induced landslides and flooding. Well, geohazard maps are specialized maps that indicate the hazard susceptibility of areas. It can, it can help us to be aware of the hazards in our area that makes us vulnerable. These maps are intended for public awareness on what are the hazards that might occur in the future or occurring in our community. If we go to another place, we can use this map for us to be aware or inform us of the hazards that might cause harm to us. These are some examples of geological hazard maps. This is the geological hazard map of volcanic eruption. Well, as a country that is located on the Pacific Ring of Fire, we can deny that we have a lot of volcanoes. Well, as you can see on the map, the places that are near the active volcanoes are the most at risk of volcanic eruption. In Bicol, for example, people who live near the very famous Mayon Volcano have a high risk for this calamity. The authority is reminding them to be ready at all times. Well, in Camarines Norte, we have Mount Labo, but luckily, this volcano is only potentially active, meaning it is morphologically with no historical or analytical records of eruption. This is the hazard map of drought in the Philippines. As you can see, the southern part of the Philippines is the most affected or has a high chance of drought. So why is the southern part of the Philippines or Mindanao have high chance of drought? That is because this place is near the equator where sun rays hits the Earth's surface at a higher angle. And another reason for this is Mindanao don't have many typhoons. Well, they have some time but they are considered at low risk of typhoons because of their location on the southern coast. The vulnerability of Mindanao is because historically it is rarely hit by tropical storms. The island is within 6 to 9 degrees north of the equator which is too close to generate the spin in the atmosphere needed to produce these cyclones. Well, the northern part of the Philippines is a low risk for drought because it is always hit by tropical storms and it is far from the equator. This is the earthquake in this shallow landslide hazard map. As you can see, the Cordillera Administrative Region or CAR and almost part of Mindanao have a high danger of earthquake in these landslides. Where is CAR? Cordillera Administrative Region is located in the northern Luzon and 
around the cuddlier mountain ranges and so after a period of heavy rains or when a typhoon or earthquake occurs the land on the hills and mountains become soft and unstable which makes the region susceptible to landslides according to the food and agriculture organization of the united nations the province most at risk of landslides are ipugao Tano del Sur, Serangani, Pinguet, Mountain Province, Bukidnon, Aurora, Davao del Sur, Davao Oriental, and Rizal. You can notice that the majority of provinces that are most at risk of landslides are placed in Car and Mindanao. Earthquakes usually occur due to the volcanic eruption. Volcanic eruption was presented earlier by Mr. Clarence Valmeyo. Now, if, if we or you are wondering why, if your areas are prone to earthquake, geological hazard map can help you identify it. If you know the earthquake in Lawagi Locos Norte, happened in 1983 of August, the shock had a surface wave magnitude of 6.5 and a maximum mercalli intensity of 8, killing 16 people and injuring 47. Seven tons were damaged several buildings collapsed, and electricity in Lawag was cut off. For example, as you can see, the red small area on the northern part of Luzon, which is the province of Ilocos Norte that has high risk since there is an active oblique sinistral strike slip fault known as Vigan Agaw Fault. The geological hazard map shown represents the intensity from highest to lowest. The most vivid red color represents the highest potential intensity while the lightest is opposite. Being situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire makes it vulnerable to frequent earthquakes. Philippines also have many active faults that causes the areas around it to have higher risk. With the help of this map, we can specify areas which is prone to typhoon. For example, the Cagayan, which is part of northern Luzon, that was devastated by the typhoon Ulysses last November 2020. Typhoon Kiko, that hits Cagayan including Babuyan Islands, Batanes, and northern part of Isabela, last September 2020, which is also part of northern Luzon, that causes extreme destruction and so on. But some areas like Eastern Visayas and here in Bicol is also prone brought by Typhoon. Even though the color displayed in the map is not very vivid. The map shows the level of risks to Typhoon. The vivid color is the highest risks while the lightest is opposite. According to the geological hazard map, the most frequently impacted areas in the Philippines is the northern Luzon since it is located near the warm tropical waters of the Pacific Ocean. The Philippines straddles the Typhoon Belt, an area in the western Pacific Ocean where nearly one-third of the world's tropical cyclones form. This area is not only the most active in the world but also have the most intense storms globally. As seen in the image, it is a Philippine map that represents various areas that are prone to typhoon. If you are wondering why our country is prone to typhoon, it is basically just located above the equator and faces western pacific with little else to absorb storm energy before it hits land. Tsunami in the Philippines are rare but could be devastating. The coastal areas, as we can see the lines indicating a high tsunami risk, according to the map shown, especially those facing Pacific Ocean, South China Sea, Sulu Sea, and Celebe Sea, can be affected by tsunamis that may be generated by local earthquakes. Tsunami usually the result of an earthquake below or near the ocean floors. Beaches, lagoons, bays, estuaries, tidal flats, and river mouths are the most dangerous places to be. It is rare for a tsunami to penetrate more than a mile inland. Well, this is the flood hazard map in Biko. 
As you can see, our province, which is Camarines Norte, especially the town of Forcelles in Paracale, are at a high risk of flood. So, sa mga nakatera sa Marcelles at Paracale na rin, alam nyo naman na marami dyang lugar na malapit sa dagat or halos puro dagat. That's why you are at risk and may affect by the flood. So, I'm reminding my classmates that living in Mercedes, Camarines Norte, that you should always be ready in case of emergency, especially if a typhoon hits our province. Dapat tayo laging handa. You should be prepared for all the calamities always. Now, the question is, why is geological hazard map important? It is important because it allows us to identify areas that are vulnerable to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, landslides, and other natural disasters. It also helps to keep the public informed. For instance, if you are going somewhere, you are aware of any potential disasters and prepared. Because the map indicates areas ranging from high to low risk, residents will know if their area is at high risk to various disasters. For example, if the areas indicated in the geological hazard map is prone to typhoons, the residents and the authorities will have an opportunity to prepare for an evacuation as soon as possible in case the typhoons hit their areas. Any clarification? Do other groups have inquiries for our discussion? If none, before we proceed to our next topic, I will ask this question. You can pause or replay this video to find the answer. So good luck and let's check your understanding. What is Geological Hazard Map and its importance in our community? We sincerely appreciate your attention today as me and Clarence reported about the Geological Hazard Map. Now, we would welcome the opportunity to return with our group mates to present the topic about mitigation strategies to prevent loss of lives and properties that will be presented by Vanessa and Harry. Your turn, guys! Thank you, Mr. Abogado. Our topic is mitigation strategies to prevent loss of lives and properties. First, we must define the word mitigation. Mitigation is an action taken by someone or group of people to reduce or prevent the risk of life, property, and natural resources from natural hazards. Natural hazard, also known geological hazard. There is no way to avoid natural hazard, but people and organization may take steps to minimize the loss of lives and properties through practicing the mitigation strategy. Here are steps that intensify nation hazards mitigation capabilities. First, protection of schools and hospitals. All schools and hospitals should be located and constructed. Ang government may tinglaga na mag-check and mag-survey sa school and hospital buildings to ensure that there is no hazard areas. And if it have, special provision are made to reduce the damage if natural hazards occur. Number two. Adoption of non-structural measure. Non-structural measure is a approaches to disaster management. Actually, there are two ways in approaching disaster management, non-structural and structural. But a need to adapt is non-structural measure. It not involve any physical construction, kundi knowledge and practices to reduce disaster impacts. For example, there are training, building codes, and public awareness raising. While structural measure are any physical construction like dams, ocean wave barriers, and evacuation center. Number three, incorporation of mitigation into new development. There is new development to withstand natural hazards like land use planning, zoning regulation, and building codes. Land use planning it is regulated by government authority if a land-based project can be approved or not. While zoning regulation, it specify land purpose. It can be used for residential, commercial, and open space purposes. Also, it regulates lot size, placement, and height of the structure to be constructed. And last, building codes. 
it is specify the design and construction of a building. This tree development can be a powerful tool for mitigating the effects of natural hazards. Number 4. Protection of Cultural Properties Mitigation planning will include protection of cultural properties like libraries, monuments, historic buildings, work of arts, and other cultural sources. Like preserving artistic significance, books, manuscripts, and many more. Example shelter of cultural properties are museums. It also have organizations that raise awareness of threats of natural hazards in cultural properties and also to mitigate damage and losses. Protection of natural resources. Mitigation plans include protection of natural resources, especially those endangered species, wildlife, fish, and plants. Mitigation plans include the location and design facilities so that it not became a cause for unexpected damage to natural resources if strong wind blow or if there is a fire to cure. Number 6. Government Leadership of Mitigation Implementation This is the government at all levels must require that new facilities they supervise and fund should be designed, built, and located according to building codes and land use practices. For example, all construct buildings should be earthquake resistant and in infrastructure and life plans such as highway and bridges are constructed at a standard level. Number 7. Mitigation Training This training are continued to develop and offer with a focus on contemporary challenges like real problems and issues associated with mitigation implementation. For example, training conducted by Disaster Risk Reduction Management through online because pandemic happened. Before, it is active activities like DIR training activities yearly in school. And last, hazard-specific research. Recent disasters show the advantage of mitigation strategies. Therefore, it is a need for research to continue improve mitigation practices. For example, specific hazard is landslide. A research need is to develop designs that mitigate ground deformation and damage to structure. Also, provide a technical base like landslide zoning and evaluate innovative landslide stabilization techniques to prevent hazard damage. That are the 8 steps that intensify hazard mitigation capabilities. Now, may I call Mr. Harry Abanes to discuss the rest of our topic. Thank you, Ms. Vanessa. Action or plan to protect human lives and properties. Number 1. Develop and rehearse a family disaster plan. Disaster plan is a must because we can use that when an emergency happens. Disaster plan is a plan consisting of action, what we're gonna do in case of an emergency. Example, get the first aid kit, then use back door to go outside. Number 2. Contact a communication plan. In case we are separated, use our radios that is connected to each other. If there is no radio at home, use your cell phones. If there is no signal or no other way or meeting place, it's always on the barangay hall or in the evacuation center. Number 3. Put emergency supply. This is a must always prepare this type of emergency supplies to be able as to be prepared in what are the circumst circumstances we might face. Number 4. Know how to shut up your appliances. Each and every one of the family members must know how to turn off main switch to be able to avoid fire or, le or electric shock. Number 5. Duplicate important documents. The best thing to, to do is place it in a waterproof box or in a bowl. Number 6. Make make a detailed inventory of personal belongings and properties. Be aware of all things in your house and take note of all the things that you will be leaving. For those who are watching this presentation, we have a question for you. Give at least 5 mitigation strategies that mention to our discussion.
that's all our video presentation thank you for watching